morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here today. My name is Rebecca Brown. I'm the ESSER Program Manager at OPI, and I'm here to talk to you today about the ESSER Data Collection Process Year 4. So here on the screen, again, um, we'll be talking about the ESSER data collection process year four. During this video, I will be walking through the entire process from the beginning where you go out, find your files, download them to your computer, fill them out, and then submit them to OPI once you're done. One clarifying piece of information, this year four process is occurring in the spring of 2024, um, but this is asking about data from fiscal year 23. So that's July 1st, 22 through June 30th of 23. And we will keep those dates front and center as we go through this walkthrough today. So the first thing that you'll need to do is go to the OPI website. That's opi.mt.gov. And then once you're there on the OPI website, over on this right-hand side, when you scroll down, you'll see that ESSER button. Click on that, and that will bring you to the ESSER webpage. On the ESSER webpage, you'll see we've got this beautiful countdown clock that is counting down until when ESSER data collection is due at uh, 5 o'clock on April 15th. Right below that data collection countdown is this big red button that says ESSER data collection. When you click on that button, that will bring you to the ESSER data collection page that looks like this. On this ESSER data collection page, the first thing that you'll notice is this gray instructions box. Notice that again, we've got that due date of 5 p.m. on April 15th. As you scroll down in this instructions box, you'll see instructions on how to fill in the file, important notes for your reference, and then the links for the submission Google form. We've got it hyperlinked and we also have it here so you can just copy and paste into your browser tab if you need to. And then at the bottom of this instructions page, we have our contact information. If at any point you come across something you think is an error or um, you're confused or you just need um, some technical assistance, please feel free to reach out um, and we are happy to help. Then as you continue scrolling down on this page, you'll see another big red button. This is for the work sessions. We are going to have Zoom work sessions every day um, of this data collection process to help you walk through the data collection form question by question. So we will be um, going through very specifically what each question is asking for, the types of data that are being asked for, etc. So when you click on that red button, that will take you to a Google form to choose which work session you want to register for. Um, again, we uh, really encourage you to register for those Zoom work sessions. Then as you continue scrolling down, you're going to start seeing folders, and these are where your data collection files are going to be located. Now, these folders are organized by county with two exceptions. We've got the co-ops all in one folder, and we've got all of our other entities who are not schools and not co-ops in their own folder. But aside from those, if you are a school district, you'll be looking for the folder for your county. Um, one thing to note, when you uh, first come to this page, it will be showing only 25 items per page, which cuts off at Judith Basin County. And that's not all of our counties in Montana. So you may need to um, choose all so that it shows all counties so that you can come all the way down to like Yellowstone County, for example. Um, but in today's walkthrough, I will be using Beaverhead County as my example. When you click on that county folder, you'll see a folder for every school district. So find your school district. I will be using Beaverhead County High School. And when you click on that folder, you'll see your file um, within that folder. Um, this is an Excel file and you just need to click on it and it will download to your computer. And once that file opens, it's going to look like this. Um, so the first tab that opens in this Excel file is the instructions tab. You'll notice down at the bottom, there are three other tabs as well, which I'll go through in just a minute here. The instructions tab in this first big green text box has the instructions for filling out the file, as well as contact information for myself and Wendy. Down below that, again, are the links to the Google form to submit your completed file. Then up on the top right here, we've got um, some tips and terminology to be used within Excel if you're not quite as familiar with this program. And then this last text box here has some definitions from the Department of Education that are specific to some questions in this data collection. So that's the instructions tab. Next, I'm going to go to the DCY4FY23. That's data collection year four 
fiscal year 23. Whoops. And um, notice when I come to this tab, it's zoomed out a little bit. It's hard to read. So I'm going to come down to the bottom right hand side and click on that zoom in button so that I can actually read the words that are on my screen. So when you get here into this year's data collection, a few things that you're going to note. Uh, the first row is the template file source. We actually got five template files from the Department of Ed, which we have consolidated into one file. Um, but this helps us know where uh, to upload your responses once they are complete. Then these next few rows here are the questions from the Department of Education. I'm going to scroll over real quick just so you can see there are going to be different colors within this data collection process. There will be yellow, green, and blue. Um, and those are the Department of Ed questions. Then the next row shows acceptable answers. These are the types of answers that are being asked for. So you'll note some of them are asking for text, some of them are asking for true-false, and some of them are asking for a number with two decimals. Then the next row down is our generalized descriptions. So we recognize that um, when the Department of Ed writes questions, they aren't always, they don't always make sense within the context of a small rural Montana school. So we have um, written generalized descriptions to help explain what the Department of Ed question is asking for. Then row 10, you'll notice is just a black row. This is just kind of a divider to help you um, figure out where you're at on the file. Row 11 is the responses row. This is where your data will actually be input. And what you'll notice here is that we have already input lots of the data for you. Um, using the data that we had on hand at OPI from previous reporting periods, um, we were able to fill in about 80% of the data, which means you as the school district only have to fill out about 20%. Um, so we've made that uh, more simple and, and smoother for you. And then the last row here is row 12 for comments. Row 12 is there um, for you to add comments or clarification or um, things like that. Row 12 is not required, but we do recommend that you use it to offer any clarification that may be needed. But row 11 is the big one. That's where you'll be putting in the data yourself. So um, what you'll note in row 11 as we move along is that right now all of these cells are gray, but I'm going to scoot us on over here um, to our first cell that is asking for data, which is column EV. And you'll notice here that this one is blue. The blue cells are where you will need to input data. And um, further on down the line here, I'll explain more in a bit, um, but some of these will turn blue based on how you answer previous questions. So here in column EV, this is asking um, if you spent any ESSER funding from Carissa, which is ESSER 2, on um, assistance with meals for students. And this is data that we did not already have on hand. So you can see we filled in um, everything to the right and left of it, but we didn't have the data for this question. So we need you to answer that question. And then I'm going to keep scrolling over to the right here. You'll see we're passing some more blue cells that need data to be entered in. Um, and the one I'm trying to get to here is column MT, which I'm pretty close right there. Column MT um, is asking, this is a true or false question, did the LEA use ESSER funds to provide home internet access for students during this current reporting period? So again, um, this reporting period is fiscal year 23, which is July 1st of 22 through June 30th of 23. We've got examples here, and this is a true or false question. So depending on how you answer this question, MT, that will affect how you answer the other questions as well. So if I didn't spend any ESSER funding on um, home internet access here, I would just put, whoops, false. Oh my goodness, let me spell it right. Um, and then these ones stay gray. However, if I did spend funding on home internet access and I put true, notice that these now highlight blue. So that indicates that now that I've answered this one true, I need to go answer these ones as well. Okay, so I'm going to wipe that out of there um, just to show you that example of how that works. And then further on down the line here, once we get to columns uh, OC through, let's see here, OO, um, this 
section is um, talking about student demographics, which is data that we did already have on hand. So we've filled in the student demographics for you. And then these columns are actually being used to pre-populate some other sections down the line here. So like, for example, this one is asking, did you um, use ESSER funding for summer programming during fiscal year 23? So if I answer true here, Notice it highlights all of these cells over here, blue, where I need to input more information. And if I scroll a little bit farther, you'll notice that the number of eligible students has already been filled in from those student demographics that I showed you a second ago. And the participating students is what you need to fill in. So the participating number should be smaller than the eligible number um, for each one of those student demographics. Um, so that's just another example of how that works, and that will carry you through to the end. We end on column VI. So yes, this is a large spreadsheet. It does have a lot of data being asked for. Um, however, we did pre-fill as much of that as we can um, for your ease and, and reference. So that's the second tab. This third tab here, this is just a blank separator tab. Um, you can use this for notes or, or tracking if you would like to, or you can entirely ignore it. That's totally fine. Um, but the reason we put this in here is to separate the year four tab from the year three fiscal year 22. This fiscal year 22 tab is here just for your reference. You don't need to fill anything in on this tab. This is a historical piece of what was submitted for your district last year during the fiscal year 22 data collection. So you can reference back to this and say, oh, what did I put in last year? Maybe my answer this year will be somewhat similar. All right. So that is the four tabs of the data collection file. Again, the instructions and the year four, fiscal year 23, those are the ones where you're probably going to be spending the most time. The separator is here just for notes if you would like. And then the year three, fiscal year 22 is just for your reference. You don't have to fill in anything on that one. Once you're done filling in this file for year four, fiscal year 23, please make sure you save the file. You'll do a file save as and then save it somewhere in your school district's file so that you have documentation um, to, to come back to. And then after you save it, you'll go to this Google form on the instructions tab. And that will look like this once it loads. So again, this is for year four, fiscal year 23. Um, and you'll need to fill out this form uh, by the authorized representative. So generally, that's going to be the superintendent or maybe the county superintendent. Please make sure you're submitting an Excel file, not a PDF file. We do need it to be in Excel format so that we can um, pull that data and submit it to uh, the Federal Department of Education for you. This is a very short, simple Google form. You'll just fill in your email address, school name, LE number, authorized representatives, full name, email, and phone number. Then this question asks, was your file ever converted? This is just a yes or no question. Please answer honestly. Um, sometimes when, uh, when we are pulling the data to give to the Federal Department of Education, we find errors in the file and those errors can come from um, converting. So it does help us to know which files have been converted so that we can um, deal with those ones appropriately. And then this question here asks you to upload the file. So you'll click on the add file button, click on browse, which opens up your file explorer, and then you'll just need to go find the file and upload it to the form. Then you'll click on next, and there's just two very short questions. Are you the authorized representative? Yes or no. And is this data collection information accurate to the best of your abilities? Yes or no. Um, and then that's it. That is the whole data collection process. Um, so if you have any questions as you're going through, please remember that um, we've got instructions on the data collection page. We've got our contact information here. Feel free to reach out. And then we do encourage you to register for those Zoom work sessions. Thank you all so much for completing the ESSER data collection year four process. Um, we hope to talk to you soon and have a great day.